Welcome to the Socially Conscious Squatter Show, where we examine the intimate link between fitness, health, and the issues of our time. I'm your host, Shane Trotter, and today I'm very excited to welcome back founder of Chicago Primal Gym, Sean Griffin. Sean, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me, Shane. Well, first of all, uh, what's new and exciting at uh, Chicago Primal Gym? Yeah, I think we had just moved into our new facility in May. Uh, we moved in in March, actually, but when we spoke, we were still kind of figuring things out there. Since the time that we spoke last, we have hired on another coach, uh, and we've hired on a, another full-time employee that's doing uh, like business operations, um, helping with a little bit of marketing, kind of helping us to fill in the gaps on some of the business-related stuff that we weren't doing as well as, as, well as I would like to be doing. Mm -hmm. So we're growing our team right now. And uh, we're, I think at this point, trying to understand how we can all work effect as effectively as possible together so that we can make the biggest impact in our community. So, Wonderful. This. Right on. So you, nothing too drastic. You haven't given up kettlebells or uh, <laughs> anything crazy no, like that. If anything, if anything, we're going deeper uh, into kettlebells, as always. But we just... Um, we're getting ready to compete in the Tactical Strength Challenge actually on Saturday, which is Strong First uh, kind of worldwide strength competition where you do uh, max barbell deadlift, uh, max set of pull-ups, and kettlebell snatch test. Oh, wow. We've got, uh, I think we've got like maybe around 50 competitors, and uh, we've got a costume contest going on, which will be fun. We've, uh, we've been training for it for the last 12 weeks, so... When the TSC happens this Saturday, we're going to have a number of people who are doing their first one, which is always uh, a lot of fun. You know, it's for pretty much everyone, it's their first time ever doing any kind of strength competition. I mean, some people might be former athletes, but a lot of the people who end up competing, you know, they didn't really grow up as athletes. These are people who are really stepping out of their comfort zone, so it's always a really, uh, it's a really exciting time for the community, and we like to have quite a bit of fun when we put them on, so... We've got a bunch of vendors bringing food and drinks. We've got uh, we're going to be playing cornhole and can jam and have a costume contest, like I said, with some prizes and stuff. So it should be a good time. We've been running a 12 week training program, and now we're about to flip the switch and run a totally new program uh, going forward. So maybe there is some stuff happening, but we're not yeah. abandoning kettlebells. <laughs> we're not abandoning. That's awesome. That and and that's such a great that's lead in. Good. That's what I really wanted to talk to you about today is that that building community and especially a community for adults a community of acti activity and play for adults last oh, yeah. time Justin Lynn and I we, we jumped into a number of issues uh, from mass shootings to boys performance in school to mental health disorders but all all of them kind of revolved around this mutual belief that um, our issues come from an environment not aligned with our biology and we asserted that what was missing is community, contribution, and some sort of movement literacy that promoted activity throughout life. So this is really where, where I thought you step in, because I've, I've never seen a facility, a organization that so, so well does that, that offers that, that sense of community and uh, kind of promotes adult play in a world that doesn't. Anyway, yeah. that's that, that's what I'm interested in digging into with you. You've de delivered all three of those components. How do we do that? I actually gave a presentation on that topic two weekends ago, and it was interesting to really think about how it is that we do, in fact, build community. And I kind of started to break down the different things that we do that I think work well. The, the first part is absolutely it starts with, with coaches that are passionate. So one of the things that we're very focused on at CPG is consistently talking about our values with our coaches in our daily programming meetings. In our uh, Wednesday, we have a, a weekly meeting that we run where we sit down and we talk about deeper issues. We write thank you cards to our members. Uh, we make sure that we're highly prepared for any upcoming events. Um, but, you know, it has to start from, from within. You have to have coaches and, and people on your staff that are first and foremost bought into the idea of creating an inclusive culture where everyone feels like they're welcomed. You know, and from there, we, we talk about really uh, building systems into the business that include play and include the, the feeling of, of like kind of letting loose and taking it easy. So we have a bunch of, uh, from an internal standpoint, we, we do a lot of different um, activities that might look not a lot like work, like 
stuff like doing like jumps where we go to Lake Michigan and uh, kind of jump in as a team. Um, even just pulling out the can jam and playing during work or pulling out the bags or something like that. When we kind of focus inward and we talk about the things that are important to us consistently and we are, are always talking about our members feedback on our program, our new members coming in, stuff that I'm sure a lot of other coaches are doing. But by being so focused from the start with our with our coaching staff, I think we've really built and instilled the value of creating a, a tribe through all of our team. And that really, you know, that translates into when we go onto the floor and we deliver our coaching, the people who are coming to the gym see that and they can feel that, you know, that buy-in from the staff. And I would mm -hmm. say that our coaching staff is better than I am at it. I mean, we've, we just did, uh, we're doing, I don't know if you've ever seen Strengths Finder. Yeah. Strengths sure. Finder 2.0. Yeah. Um, we just went through that as a team. And actually, that was the topic of our, of our meeting today. Um, and we've got a couple of guys on our team. One of our recent hires, who's a new coach, and his number one strength was uh, like inclusiveness or includer. I can't remember what it was, includer, I think. So really, you know, when it comes to building community, and I think just in general, when it comes to servicing your clients, you have to start within and like make sure that there's buy-in and alignment with your team. But then obviously you have to do stuff that consistently allows for tribe to be built by the people who are a part of the gym as well. So, you know, for us, the TFC, it's an intimidating event. It takes a lot of work to host. It takes a lot of work to get people excited about it. It takes 12 weeks of really screwing up our programming, frankly, because we're trying to run like three different classes at one time in one space. But we know that at the end of the day, everyone who participates is going to come out on the other end feeling a greater sense of, of belonging and feeling a greater sense of, you know, using strength as a greater purpose, um, which is what I, you know, and I think that's connecting with other people like you, like you said. So those, you know, that competition, it, it is playful. And we always tie play into the stuff we do. Like I said, with the, you know, just as simple as having people stay afterwards for drinks and food, you know, and doing the costume contest. It's just our way of doing the playful touch on stuff. Do you lift um, is in that a costume? A, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, awesome. 100%. As a matter of fact, one of my coaches, uh, Steve, who's a longtime coach, at CPG, he was wearing an Aladdin costume when he deadlifted like 475 pounds at the TSC a couple years ago, which was pretty sweet. I've seen the picture. Yes, that's on that's on your website. It's solid. Yeah, it's pretty solid. <laughs> it's it's interesting to me to dig into this play idea. Play is probably one of the most natural th things that humans do. It's how we learn when we're young. Uh, it's how we how we kind of begin to understand relationships uh, and, and interpersonal sure. relationships and how to relate to, to another and, uh, it's, and a it's a great way to find flow yes exactly to stop to stop being in your head and to be in the moment and this is not just a very formative experience but it's something that throughout our lives uh, is, is absolutely essential uh, there's been a lot written that that you know partially some of the causes of of the rise in mass shootings is just the absolute vacancy of, of, of any outlets for play, uh, especially uh, as you get older. And it is interesting. Yeah. You know, my whole life was going outside, playing with a ball, doing something, even if it was just kicking against the wall. You know, we, we were always outside playing something. And then, you know, it's around college. Your outlets for play become fewer and fewer. And then after college, where does an adult go and play? Where do they find a community? that would go and play. All of a sudden, sure. you're going to get together with with people, with friends, which becomes rarer. It's almost universally a sedentary experience. Sure. Or people so, play uh, play by drinking. Uh, you know, that sure. happens all the time in, in Chicago. And that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I mean, I, I'm not, I like drinking, but it's unfortunate that as adults, when we think about play, it typically involves overconsumption of alcohol because that's obviously not the healthiest choice in the world. Sure. Oh, and that certainly shouldn't be the only way that adults could play. Yeah. We shouldn't have That's to be inebriated to justify it. So, so I think that I think it's special what you've done, uh, and that you are a organization that mostly just deals with adults, and uh, your programs are an outlet for physical activity and often play. You've talked to me about uh, you know breaking down barriers by crab walking, foot fiving. Um, <laughs> you've also created a community that promotes that. 
I think that's an essential part of uh, what you do that I, I think is so rare and needed in our world. Well, the other thing, Shane, about the about the play is like it doesn't have to be all consuming. It can be simple stuff, but it needs to be frequent so that people understand that it's important. You know, it's like Dan Johnny says, if it's important, do it every day. Uh -huh. And just by even giving people a quick reminder during the warm up, if you're in a big circle and you get everyone down, like you said, into a crab walk or into a bear crawl. One of the ones that one of our coaches came up with recently is you crawl to the middle. And then you have to find someone who's got the same birthday month as you and give them a left-handed high five. And that's just a great example of something that puts every single person on the same level and it makes them all totally lose sense of, you know, of, of space and self and all that stuff. And you're just crawling around having fun. And there's yeah. no real rhyme or reason for it. But when you find, you know, first off, watching that as a coach is magical. It's, it's hilarious. People are laughing. But also being a part of that, like when you're crawling around and you finally find someone who's got that same birthday month and you high five them, like most people probably don't get a lot of high fives throughout their day. Sure. And you can set that up. And I think part of it is just understanding that that stuff does have such a lot of, so much value. You know, if you only do it if you believe that it's valuable. And we've gone through waves of like playing more and playing less. And I noticed that our staff is more inspired and our people are having more fun when there's play more frequently in our program. You know, not everyone's going to love it. And sometimes people are going to be like, okay, move on. And that's why we typically <laughs> keep it, you know, we keep it short for the most part, unless it's a Saturday where we might play a little bit more. But I think it's, it's something that it will not harm your experience to get people to laugh with each other and high five each other and push on each other in a fun, playful way. If, if that's part of your program, it's going to add value for sure. Certainly. And you balance that somehow with, again, a, a very highly technical tool. Um, oh, absolutely. It, which I'm sure poses some challenges. Uh, you'd like to, you know, you don't want to make it seem like we can just throw this kettlebell, you know, in circles and, <laughs> and uh, right. it, it won't be dangerous. So th th I'm sure that's a, a bit of an art. It's, it is an art, yeah, and it's an art to be able to deliver uh, quality coaching in a playful way as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I think what's important about that is like people are put at ease when people aren't, you know, when not everything is so serious. And, and so when we bring a playful nature to the way that we, to the way that we interact with our members from a motivational standpoint, but couple that with very high quality focus, you know, attention on form and, and execution and exercises and also safety then I think people start to respect the things that are important to us, like having fun and working with quality. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty good things for people to, to kind of grasp onto, I think, rather than just coming in and feeling like all they're doing is coming in to sweat and move on with their day. Yeah. Which no they doubt. also want to do. You know? Yes, sure. If you can move better and get some play in while you're at it, like it's pretty likely that most of the adults we see are not going to have any other opportunity to get down on the ground and crawl around with people that they know and love. And give high fives to you know what I mean unless they're getting yeah. at it with, which is pretty cool so you use challenge uh, and uh, you've talked in the past about about running challenges and now yeah. you have uh, this challenge coming up this weekend uh, with the SFG what benefit do you think challenge has in creating a community I think what's probably most important with being a part of, of a community is you want to feel like you're a part of something sort of greater than yourself you want to feel like you belong to something where you share the same idea with a lot of other people. That's very empowering for people and it makes them feel really included. And when we run our challenges, the structure is very straightforward. Uh, it's, it's very easy to digest and we get large groups of, of people to do it. So in the past four or five challenges, we've had between like 100 and 120. We might have had like 140 in our last challenge between members and new members. and when we have all of those people eating with a similar focus on high quality nutrients, coming in and training, practicing certain lifestyle factors that, you know, simple stuff like meditate or go for a walk or read or whatever it may be. And then you couple that with a really nice Facebook private group where a lot of the stuff in the Facebook group is either educational in nature or playful in nature but it's all being shared amongst everyone and it's all on this like focused, like for instance, it might be 
take a picture of you doing a primal movement somewhere in the city. Best picture, win, you know, whoever gets the most likes wins this prize. That's just something where you're going to have people going out and being creative and having fun. And that, to me, is the way that, that you build community, is by having people do the same thing. And, and like, w with, our, with our program, one of the big challenges that we run into is, you know, we've got, you know, we've got 250 or so members, but a lot of these people train at the same hours, so they might only see the same people at those hours and really not have an understanding of how big our community really is unless we're putting on events like challenges or like one-off events like the Tactical Strength Challenge where everyone comes together and celebrates movement or nutrition or, or strength or whatever together. So these challenges are our opportunity to say this is, you know, this is what we believe in. Let's bring everyone together and have them be a part of that. And I don't see any other way that you can effectively build a tribe. Sorry. That's my dog. <laughs> um, you know, I think about like private and semi-private training facilities, and I oftentimes wonder how how they're able to build communities, or whether or not they're as successful as as a group training place like we are. You know, and then there's other group training places where I think it's more just about coming in and getting a workout on, you know, and coming in and sweating and then going. Yeah, versus just ha like very clearly defining what is important. And challenges allow us to do that. You know, they say here we say here's the objective. This is what's most important for you to live your best life. Let's all do it together for a short period of time, and talk about it for for four weeks or five weeks or six weeks. And I've kind of hypothesized quite a few times that ha habitual training changes don't tend to happen outside of a community. You you can only white knuckle things for so long. Uh, so yeah. most most of positive health change that happens in today's world is radically against popular culture so you're you're fighting this massive tide of most of society so when you allow uh, a community to surround someone that kind of uh, it, it becomes that positive momentum that keeps them on track um, well yeah that's and not only that but I think it's almost inevitable that people are going to be let down by the actual physical transformative results that they achieve as part of training unless they're really able to dial in their nutrition for an extended period of time which is you know I don't know about your experience but in my experience it's it's not a large percentage of people sure um, you know, well that's, that's even people, more radical than than training because yeah. training oh, oh sure you're into training oh that's cool I I've you know most people oh I worked out once or I've been to this this spin class and that and it's all the same nutrition and eating well consistently is a far departure uh, from the normal it definitely is and the, the I think the big thing about community and about surrounding people w with something that they believe in kind of giving them an idea to latch onto whatever that idea might be for you know for your community it's different for everyone but that gives people something, you know, that gives people hope. It gives people something when they're maybe not necessarily achieving the results that they want to be achieving from a physical standpoint or from a body composition standpoint, but they still feel a part of something that's important to them. They feel, they, you know, they feel connected to the people in the community. They feel connected to the greater idea of, in our case, the greater purpose of strength, you know, living your best life. And I think it's important to instill something like that. And for us, the challenges are our way of very explicitly telling our people this is, you know, this is what we believe. Yes, the, I mean, the proof's in the pudding. It's not what you say, it's what you're doing. I've talked a lot about rites of passage. Through having a, a similar experience, maybe a, a very challenging experience, like a oh, yeah. max deadlift, max pull-up, and five-minute five kettlebell snatch test, you now... You share something deep with someone. Absolutely. Um, the, Absolutely. The, it, it, there's, there's, it's not superficial, uh, and you have a very similar experience that 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 bonds you yeah. and that that it well, breaks down more barriers. Yeah, that's an interesting point because in in my uh, in the presentation I told you about, which was called "Build Your Tribe and Delivering Happy uh, and Deliver Happiness," how to build your tribe and deliver happiness. One of the things that that I talked about that we've been doing. Since we really, since we talked last, is we've actually established a system where we are consistently celebrating people's milestone attendance classes. So, like when you attend your hundredth class or your fiftieth class or your two hundredth or your three hundredth, um, mm -hmm. we've built a system where we get notifications in real time when those people are actually in the class, 
and then we capture you know group photos with these people holding up a nice sign um, they get to celebrate and that feeling of that feeling of connection that that builds um, is is just it's huge man it's huge for building yeah. community and for building share, shared experiences because like a rite of passage you know if you a rite of passage 200 classes if you see someone else who just shared that milestone with you you're going to automatically feel a sense of connection with that person and for our new people um, who might look at a five minute snatch test and be like uh, I don't think so I'm never doing that or I could never do that they might see someone else who just attended their 200th class and had it celebrated in class that they can relate to and they can you know and they can see and say well I could be there I could make this a habit so anything that you can do to build that sense of community and build shared experience is really cool because people can gain a sense of mastery and a sense of belonging vicariously through other people just by watching it happen yeah I wonder how you handle having too many people at a class. <laughs> Just <laughs> is what I, you mentioned someone coming for their first time. That's what I, I I wonder how you don't break down the walls and have to have to move again here in another six months. Oh, Sounds yeah. like just such an I, awesome place. <laughs> I wish it were like that. We we always take pictures at the biggest classes. Just to, just to be, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, but you know sometimes classes are very busy, but at the same time we do. A significant amount of daily work to make sure that our program is ready to handle mm -hmm. certain volumes of people, and we and we have you know, we it's extremely rare that we would have a class that has more than 30 people in it. Most of our classes are in between 12 and and 20, maybe you know some of our busy hours going over 20. I know this isn't exactly the topic, but no, um, yeah, you know, but the, those bigger classes build community. And if they're run well, you know, if you have a system to run those classes effectively and still deliver a high, uh, a high level of individualized attention, um, a high level of one-on-one -on -one communication with the people who are in the class, which are part of our system of staff development, then you can, uh, then you can do that effectively without having to break walls down. So what is this? You've talked about, okay, community uh, and challenges and parting kind of your value system uh, that you want to drive the community. You've talked about strength having a greater purpose, which I love. What are these core values uh, that you're trying to impart on people th th that kind of guide your challenges? I know, I know you're, you're formed, or, or a lot of what forms your thinking is the, the primal blueprint. Mm -hmm. So what, what are kind of some of those core things that you think most are most necessary for people of today's time and uh, most hard to, 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 to get them committed to? That's a great question. I think it probably starts with with the reason that CPG was even started in the first place, and that was to build a, a community of people who could share the idea that that physical fitness and strength is important, that moving the way that humans were meant to move is important, uh, that eating the foods that we were meant to eat is important and makes you feel better, um, and that being a part of a close-knit group where you get to share uh, lighthearted experiences and also deeply meaningful experiences together uh, is something that most everyone is lacking unless they happen to be part of uh, you know a close knit a very close knit wide group of friends or um, you know a sports team where they're consistently involved with year after year but that stuff like you said after you you know go away from school that just doesn't exist for most people most you know, most people are focused on developing their professional lives and you know probably building a family you know and there's not a lot of people who are consistently going out and being a part of a community that's focused on eating healthy and movement and that's sure. not to say that all we do is you know it's not like we don't allow people who don't eat healthy I mean we've got you know we throw parties all the time where we've got booze and we typically have primal food on hand but you know, I, I, I felt, I think the reason why you and I align so well is because I agree with you that this, that our culture now does not promote high quality physical movement and high quality foods that are prepared by you as being the foundation of living, you know, a, a great life. And to me, that was, uh, that's really sad. And I, I wanted to build a place where that could exist and where that was the forefront. Yeah. To think that these, kids, you know, I'm in education, to think that these kids are going to grow up and know how to live healthily when they've had zero exposure to it, it's not going to happen. 
Uh, we, you know, yeah. we surround them by a fortress of fast food, and oh, it's so bad. Uh, yeah, and you know, we, that's just At all the, they've ever seen was, or known. One of my one of the, my uh, members who's a who's a teacher uh, in the Chicago Public Schools said said that they uh, have reduced their recess to forty five minutes a week. That that's wow. their total wow. recess for a week. That's and amazing. we got we got a half an hour of if I remember correctly, when I was young, we got like a half hour lunch and forty five minutes of recess, or maybe it was, and we had gym class. Yes, you know, yes. we were moving. We were moving for ninety minutes a day, and even then, I was always personally extremely restless. Like I don't want to sit in a chair if I'm a if I'm a kid. I want to be playing. Um, <laughs> and if you you know if you look, not that I'm a huge studier of how our ancestors lived, but if I just think about it logically, you probably didn't sit around all the time when you were a kid as we were evolving as a species. You probably were playing all the time with the other kids until you got to the point where you could start providing by going out and hunting or you know, doing any of the other numerous things that had to have been done. But you weren't just Which sitting were there being, <laughs> being lec yeah, retroactively being lectured at. And sure. to me that's tragic and when we get a lot of people who come to us and they haven't moved in an extended period of time in any sort of structured way or just any way whatsoever. You know, it's just sedentary. What are your, your, your big, big ticket items that you want to somehow uh, get across to your clients in, in a world where they're not, not seen as, as normal? You talked about meditation. You talked mm -hmm. about eating you know, whole foods. You, these things are, are, are far departures from, from, from the norm. So how how do you go about? Uh, you certainly, it's not lesson one. Here's how you Turkish get up. Here's how you meditate. You know. <laughs> so what no, what's think, the process of of kind of grabbing that attention and convincing them that that this is all part of making them a better human or, or a happier human? Well, our challenges, I think, are the times where we do that the most effectively because we do actually like, that is what we are talking about. Uh, on the everyday grind of of just training at CPG, you know, when there's not a challenge going on or when it's the dark of winter here in Chicago, we're trying to primarily teach people that strength is a skill and quality movement will uh, enhance your life in pretty much every way. And what's interesting about actually focusing on getting people measurably stronger is that people will of their own volition tell you about how it's enhancing their lives in, in other ways. You know, you don't necessarily have to tell people what to do because I think everyone is so individual in the way that they go about improving their own lives. But if you can give them a foundation like getting stronger, for instance, in something like a Turkish get-up, which is probably the thing that we celebrate the most at the gym um, because it is so clear, like, okay, you can do this bell or you just did this bell for the first time. You know, as you teach people that strength is a skill and you give people that foundation, which is, which is what we are focused on all the time, that carries over into people's lives. And I think that's something that any coach who's listening to this can, can truly understand and probably anyone who's really experienced the power of, of, of improving your physical capabilities. It carries over really, really well. And when you start getting stronger and you start feeling better about your, your body from a physical standpoint, it starts to motivate you to want to dial in other things like, you know, obvious things like eating better and recovering better. So sleeping more or doing something like practicing meditation, if that might be the thing that you like. But it just brings out, I think it brings out the best in people. And so that's where we really primarily place our focus. Because at the end of the day, we're a gym, you know. So sure. we're coming in and for, you know, most of our members are coming in and that's the thing that they're seeing from CPG is that we train with kettlebells and we want you to get stronger. So we place our emphasis there and that's why I think the challenges are important because you you structure something where people can say, okay, tell me about the other things now and, and let me try this out with, with everyone else supporting me. So people come in to CPG and mm -hmm. what, what, what's that like the first time? Uh, well, the first thing people are going to notice when they walk into CPG is that every single person on staff is going to is going to talk to them and give them attention from the very start and throughout the entire experience. That to us is extremely important to have personal emotional connections with people when they come in. 
frankly, I've never loved our onboarding process of doing free trials, so I won't dig too much into that, but I'll say we're always trying to improve how we bring people in for their first experience because I think sometimes it can be very overwhelming to try and experience a class without a true understanding of what it is that we do and how we develop people effectively. I think to this point we've built our community just honestly just based on really really freaking caring about people like from the moment that they walk in it's just like we've drilled it into our subconscious on every level that if we just show people how much we care about them over time they're going to trust us and when they trust us they will say what do I need to do to achieve my results and no matter what your results you know, no matter what results you want, the answer is always get stronger with your Turkish kid up. <laughs> always, hundred percent. That one's for you, Grant. So, what makes it? What makes the Turkish get up so uh, life changing? Well, I think what you have is, you know, the perfect strong first calls it the yin and the yang. So you've got the ballistic and the grind. The ballistic and the the swing being very explosive the grind and the, the get up being something where you're moving your body through a full range of motion loaded unilaterally so you know that you're going to be building stability across your whole body and you're taking an exercise where you have a very clear okay I completed this like I stood up with the bell and I got back down without dropping it and that is just a very rewarding feeling for people mm -hmm. and then the swing is so beautiful because you can build strength with the swing and you can build strength and endurance with the swing in a safe and effective manner with a, like if you can do a hip hinge you can probably do high quality swings with a little bit of intervention from a coach um, you know obviously if, if you can't you know if your active straight leg raise is a one one then you probably shouldn't be swinging and we don't swing with those individuals but we certainly try to get them to swings as soon as we can uh, and if you can't put your arms over your head, you probably shouldn't be standing up with a kettlebell overhead. But that doesn't mean that we can't start building some of the components and aiming for that as quickly as possible. And I think you've just got an exercise where the, the get up is the one exercise that I've seen that you can pretty darn safely make just about anyone feel really strong. And I think that's a really important thing. Like, I look at the deadlift. Like, we're training the deadlift right now for the TSC, and we've been training it for 12 weeks. And I obviously love the deadlift. I mean, it's such a fantastic exercise. But a lot of people just, they, they can't deadlift well. They just, you know, it hurts their back, or, you know, and they, they're, they're nervous about it, or it, it's just, it's one of those exercises where you definitely have to have a certain type of mentality to really push the envelope with deadlifts. And I just haven't seen the same thing with get-ups. Like I've seen people who, you know, seem timid or have no athletic background, and you get them strong with get-ups, and they just like it. Just opens their their spirit up. They're just like, oh my god, I feel so, you know, I feel so good to hit that next bell. And we, it, it's probably partly because we celebrate it so much, and we've made such a purpose. I'm sure if, you know, if if you celebrate, you know, let's say you're a CrossFit and you celebrate the barbell snatch, well, that's probably something that makes your people really excited and ignited about about doing it but then when you balance that out with the kettlebell swing which is a, a movement that can I think very safely really elevate your heart rate and give you that burn feeling while at the same time training strength training grip strength training core strength um, you just got you know you're covering a lot of ground with two exercises that just about anyone can learn in one little square with one little tool so yes yeah, so you can have functionality those, thing. Those so you have 30 per, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's right. And like, if we had to be getting 30 barbells out and loading and unloading weights and dropping barbells and stuff, you know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Like, that's pretty awesome. But it just, I don't know. To me, I, I just the kettlebell well, radically like, change your system. <laughs> I mean, it how sure do you would. Do that? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And, and I just think the kettlebell is like it's that tool that's it's super functional. If you get taught to use it the right way, you can really, really get strong in a number of different ways, and you can create endless variety with the kettlebell without even setting it down. So, it's a dynamite tool. No doubt, no doubt. And, you, and the other thing that's important about the kettlebell, which I'll just end with, is you don't. I think I said this last time, but you don't ever have to progress past this, the swing and the get up 
to get phenomenal results and to keep those phenomenal results pretty much for as long as you want. They have the simple and sinister or kind of the idea of greasing the groove. It's like you can do get ups and swings pretty much every day and yes. not bring yourself out. It, yes, certainly. And, and really always be improving. Um, sure. And not, ju not just be, you know, kind of on autopilot, just hitting that, that steady 56K get up autopilot all time. <laughs> yeah. We had two we had two we had two ladies hit a thirty two K get up on the same day uh last week on I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. It was so cool, man. That is awesome. I don't mean to brag, but I just it it's so cool. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That, to see people get strong and, and to have the feedback from that person be, you know, I couldn't I, I didn't believe it, you know, I didn't want to believe that it would work. I didn't think it would, but I trusted in the process and I trusted the coaches and I feel so much better for you know, for having done it. It's like mm -hmm. That to me is going to be so much more rewarding than just taking someone through a circuit where they're just like sweating, you know, and never sure. getting better. Yes. You know, what do they What do they report at the end of the day? That that it was hard. I sweat a lot. And I mean, when they get home, you don't want them to be to have that be the only impression. And I sure. think that's the the majority of people when they okay, I, I'm going to commit to some some fitness type uh, journey. I need to get. I need to go work with somebody. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no experience in, in in the fitness or health industry. Let me go. Let me go somewhere. And then they come home, and most of the time, what they're going to tell someone is, "Oh, it's great. I'm exhausted. I'm I'm fried." Mm -hmm. and, and I worked out. Exactly. I worked out. And 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 it's not changing their perception right. of 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 what it what it is that 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 is what their intent. You know. Yep. The, the relationship they have with that. Sure, and I would, and I would think in an environment like that where there's no focus on continual improvement and like really truly getting stronger, something like play might not work as well, because mm -hmm. you're not building that mindset of like we're here to produce the best freaking version of you, and one of the ways we do that is to get you as strong as you can get safely, and another way that we do that is to have you lose your sense of self by playing and meeting other people and playing rock paper scissors and telling people your middle name and then doing burpees, like just silly stuff. Uh, it's sure. a great combination. Strength sure. and play are, are, go together really well. Yes, yes. It, it, the, the, the normal is uh, more of a punch the clock sort of mentality. Yeah. Sure. Um, very outcome oriented. And I think that that lends well to, to what you do is it, you're always in the process and sure you're chasing strength, but there's a purpose behind it. So you, you, you're wrapped up in that process. Oh, yeah. yeah. Versus being outcome oriented, versus um, kind of th th this idea that I ate these calories and now I must punish myself for them. You know, it, 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 it's allowing us to tap back into humanity versus this rat race. That's a great way of putting it. That's a great way of putting it. It's you are tapping into it. just that feeling of just doing something for the sake of of doing it because you like it and because you enjoy the process. And so you have to, you know. Most people are only going to enjoy going in and doing boring workouts where they're just trying to sweat for so long. You have to give them something that makes them feel good about the process that they're building towards. And there's nothing more rewarding than being able to do something that you know you couldn't have done before to yeah. see to see and feel that tangible progress. Yes, um, I talked to Tony Genelcor, and his his big thing with everyone he trains is, uh, especially women he trains, is the pull up. I want you, our first goal is to do a pull-up because, you know, we've been institutionalized that girls don't do pull-ups. They yes, do they straight do. arm hangs and blah, 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 blah. So th there's nothing more empowering than doing something today that you couldn't uh, a week ago, a month ago. So true. And that's, what, that's the greater purpose of strength. Go into that. The greater purpose of strength. Well, it's, you know, it's kind of what we've been covering this whole time, but really it's the, just the mindset that, you know, by getting stronger in the gym and by, by truly like focusing on getting stronger uh, and being surrounded by a community, you're going to bring out the best in your life. It just kind of happens naturally. And that's, a, you know, that's just the understanding that unless you, unless you give people a culture where it is expected that they're going to improve and get better and commit and, you know, be a part of the progression of developing their best self in the gym, you know, you have to create that structure in order for people to get that, in, in order for people to feel that greater purpose, uh, which is, like I said, to carry over into your whole life, to make you better at everything else, and really to change your mindset around 
believing in a process and sticking to things. You know, I'd say we don't play, we don't, I'm very guilty of this, but we don't stick to things. You know, we hop around from thing to thing. And, you know, the greater purpose of focusing on getting strong is it builds a sense of commitment into your life, a sense of bettering yourself in a very measurable way. Beautiful. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day in everything we do, whether it's fitness or I'm in education. That's what everything should be, the, the backbone of everything we're doing, uh, just to get a little bit better every day. It's probably the secret to happiness. Maybe it is. Strength is the secret to happiness. I really like that. <laughs> <laughs> strength is the secret. <laughs> Look, man, I argued in my presentation that when you combine strength with community and tribe, you have yeah. the ability to create meaning for people and to deliver happiness ultimately. And I think you know, I, I have truly seen that that's, that that's true because the moments where we've seen people and heard, had people tell us that they were, they felt the most sense of just like amazingness in their life. You know, they felt the best about themselves. It's never the time when someone's like, I lost 20 pounds or something like that, right? It's always the time where someone's like, that was my first pull up I've ever done. Or like, oh my God, I've been trying to do this bell for so long. I remember watching one of our members, Alyssa, she had been working flexed arm hangs for a TSC we were training for, mm -hmm. and she was like, I think I might be close to doing a pull-up. I was like, all right, well, how close do you think you are? And she's like, I don't know, let's just try it. And she just jumped up on the bar, and she <laughs> ripped off a pull-up and did her first one ever. And she came down, and she started running around the gym cheering, and like the whole class was going crazy for her. Those are the moments that, that sort of can get to that higher level of actually delivering happiness to people and, and the meaning that people get. That's the strength has a greater purpose, you know what I mean? That's more yeah. meaningful to someone. That moment is more meaningful than going on a diet for six weeks and losing 10 pounds because no there's doubt. a chance you're going to gain that back. There's no yes. one that's ever going to take away that sense of accomplishment that you felt when you did that pull-up. Absolutely. And it's, there's so much that led up to that, though. To just have the confidence in a place to jump up on that bar, do a pull up, and then run around and, and, and high five everyone and have people happy for you. Um, I think that's that's really what's special about what you've done and, and, and what I want to highlight today is is uh, you know community is not just getting people to a place. It's it's everything that 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 led up to that moment uh, that that makes it possible for not just for this person to to have this success, but for it to be a community wide success for yeah. everyone to be invested in each other. Absolutely, it's it's something that needs to be celebrated all the time. You know, we it's like I said, we celebrate attendance milestones, we celebrate PRs, but we're not we're not just celebrating. You know, the first time that you do a thirty two k get up, we're celebrating the first time that you do a get up with a shoe. Uh, and it's yeah. not like we're kind of giving out gold stars for people, the sense of like everyone getting a trophy just for participation. That's sure. it's not what we're talking about here, but we are talking about recognizing when someone is, is stepping out of their comfort zone and recognizing when someone is, is installing a habit. Uh, mm -hmm. And those are the things that I think lead up to people celebrating those things when they achieve them. And yeah. I think... Also, it's a certain personality that runs around the gym like that. Sometimes people get PRs and they're like, don't say anything to anyone. But we're like, <laughs> well, we yell it out and we're like, go ring that bell right now. You're ringing the bell and we're taking a picture. And you know, not everyone loves that, but we just do it and we just mean it so much when we do it that people are like, all right, well, fine, I'll do it. And at That's the end awesome. of the day, they're usually like, they're usually like thank you, that was, that was really nice. <laughs> yeah, I was taught to never to never show that I'm excited about things. But that was really neat. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can get people to break out of their shell. Yeah. I mean, we all hear it every day uh, and see it. And gosh, I can't even watch the news anymore. You know, we're more fractured than ever before. There's all these divisions and differences and, you know, Democrats, Republicans, wherever you land, I think the solution is, is to find common ground and to, to celebrate each other. And, and I think that's, again, that's where the community happens. But yeah. it's, it's, it's more necessary now than it's ever been to kind of go back to where we started. There's such a lack of fitness, of communities that promote play, that have shared values, that bring people together at more than just a superficial level. You know, with with social media, uh, there there there's no limit to how many people can be in your circle, 
but who's got your back? You know, that, that sounds very dramatic, but people should feel like there are people who have their back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a crucial part of why I think we've been successful, because people come in and they feel like that. And it starts with the staff. You know, it starts with, starts with our coaches showing that they care about people, and then what happens is the people who want that in their life, they end up sticking around and sharing that with the new people who come into the community. You know, so I think people are always, and I'm certainly guilty of it myself, but people are always looking for like the way to do it. You know, like how do I build community or whatever it may be. But it always starts from within. You know, it always starts from like a, a true belief in what you're doing. And that belief is going to wax and wane. But if you can establish systems where you can consistently do that stuff, then, you know, people do get that sense of belonging. And I think that's, that's really important really important to give that to everyone. No doubt. So I guess we'll end how we ended last time. I want to see, have you progressed this idea any? What is the one rite of passage that uh, would create the greatest communities in our society? Oh, maybe I said a five minutes snatch test last time. I'm not sure. No, you didn't. <laughs> okay. I probably said a 24K get up for a man and a 16K get up for a woman if I had to guess. And I would still say that that's it, because I think if, honestly, if you think about a rite of passage, every individual should feel strong, because feeling strong gives you confidence in so many ways. And I have seen everyone from, you know, a teenager to a, a 65-year-old woman do a 16K get up on the female side, and same age goes for male side. And if you can maintain that quality throughout your whole life uh, as an adult, you know, you're going to feel very confident with your ability to handle your physical body throughout life. So, sure, there are plenty of mental or emotional rites of passages, but from a physical standpoint, if you can just show me a full Turkish get up on both sides with either a 16K as a dude, 12, or uh, sorry, 24K as a dude, 16K as a lady, then I think that that's good enough for me. Wonderful. Well, get on it, people. <laughs> that's right. Get on it. Unless you got unless you got overhead mobility restrictions, in which case maybe fix that first if possible. <laughs> certainly. Just, certainly. Disclaimer for the get up. <laughs> get taught to get well, taught to do it right, but get taught to do it right so it's safe. I love it. I love it. Well maybe next time we can get into how to fix those overhead mobility issues. But. Yeah, man. Maybe maybe <laughs> maybe I can see you do a get up since we got this video going. You show me a forty eight K get up and then we'll, you know, we'll <laughs> that will be good. I don't have a 48K look, here with you look, me. You look way stronger than me, so I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. When I come up to Chicago, we'll see what I can pull off. Okay. I've, uh, be fun. To be honest, I've never, um, I've, I've never done more than a 32K get-up just because that's, that's I just have what I bought and I work out with at home. The only time I've been in a facility with more than that was when I went to the RKC and you know at oh, that nice. point at that point I'm you know I'm saving all the energy I can save. It's a long weekend. I'm not oh, trying, to, Lots trying of to break any records. Yeah. <laughs> nice, I want to be man. ready when I have to perform. <laughs> so nice. maybe maybe you can get me uh get me a new new PR when I get up to Chicago. Yes, I love it. We'll take a picture, <laughs> we'll ring the bell. You go through the whole experience. Sounds good. We'll get my wife on it too. She's the. Uh, I've got her swinging, but the the get up. Yeah, I got to convince her that it's worth the the investment in learning the skill. <laughs> great start. It's a great start. Right. I I've, I actually have seen that women respond even more favorably than men do. I mean, men obviously love getting strong and they get up too, but there's something extremely empowering I think for a lady just because. They've been told, it's like a pull-up, you know, because they've been told for so long that women don't have upper body strength or you're not going to be able to build upper body strength. And I can tell you definitively that that is false. Like, yeah. it's false. But you have to give, I remember sitting down with one of our members and uh, she wanted to talk about her goals and she started relating stories of, like, being in gym class and not being able to climb uh, the, the, the rope to the top. And she talked about not being able to do the monkey bars and... Uh, how that like affected her confidence from a physical standpoint, and I was like, well, it, you know, it kind of sounds like all these things that you talked about were all overhead and upper body focus that you really struggled with, which makes sense because I hear a lot of females saying similar things. And I said, you know, I think the number one thing that you should do is focus on getting stronger in your get up. At the time, this this lady uh, 
was doing 12k get-ups and now she's doing 20k get-ups regularly and she seems pretty pretty happy about it which is cool mm -hmm. so, do you ever get that. clients who are, who are just you sound like a broken record I know it's my get-up I need to do my yeah. get-up sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean not everyone is willing to put in the work to, to do that and a lot of people uh, get bored but I, you know I don't want to be competing on trying to create endless variety and entertain people you know, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's it's going to be hard to keep people engaged and motivated there if they're not building any skill and feeling a sense of, of getting better. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we probably sound like a broken record a lot, <laughs> I would say. But that's because we believe in what we believe in, you know. It's like my, my, my partner, Grant, is even more like, I, you know, I don't want to give you an endless variety of exercises because I know what's actually going to make you better is – Swing in the get up. So let's do that. And like, if you don't like that, then, you know, not in a rude way, but maybe go somewhere else, you know, because that's not what we do. It's not, we want to make you better. And this is what we believe. So, well, I think that's a, that, that, that's a that's a really important thing I think for people to remember in building communities that at the end of the day, a community has to stand for something. Yeah. And they, they, ha they have to be willing to draw the line somewhere. Sure. Uh, or else it becomes not a community. Uh, well, that's right. The, the, this, the, this dogma of neutrality doesn't create strong values. It doesn't create uh, any change. There's no. no purpose there. That's a great point. And the, the, it, in my presentation, there was a slide on what is a tribe. And uh, Seth Godin had the quote that uh, a tribe is a, a group of people connected to each other, connected to a leader, and connected to an idea. And, like that set, and I highlighted this statement, connected to an idea. And I think you're totally right that if, you know, if people aren't connected to a, an idea, and for us the idea is that, like I said, strength has a greater purpose and probably more explicitly for our members that getting strong with the kettlebell is, is the best way to achieve your fitness goals. You know, if people don't have a sense of what that idea is, then it's you know, unlikely that there's going to be that really deep level of buy-in and you're not going to be able to deliver on those things that go beyond working out or even just getting stronger. No doubt. I love it. Well, Sean, it's been awesome. Uh, thanks so much for yes, taking sir. the time. I think, uh, I think people are going to really appreciate your, your well, I hope so. And, and really, yeah, I, well, I think that you have the uh, secret sauce for creating the communities that uh, we need. So uh, I've certainly learned a ton, and uh, I hope people uh, appreciate well, it as much as I do. Well, that's great. I, I appreciate it as well, and I would just like to say that it, none of it would be possible without the team that we've got. So I appreciate you saying that I've got the secret sauce, but I think there's just something magical about our staff and about the people in our community. It, it's something. It's it's certainly greater than me, and it's a uh, you know it's an idea that that everyone has sort of latched onto. It's become this sort of nebulous primal thing that uh, happens to be working for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe all the stuff we That's talked up. about today. But thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Right on. Is there any anything uh, you want to leave us with? Places to to find you on social media or yeah. uh, anything you've got coming up uh, that you want us paying attention to? Sure, sure. Well, uh, you can see Chicago Primal Gym uh, on Facebook and uh, on Instagram at Chicago Primal Gym. We are hosting a uh, Strong First event in May. I think it's Kettlebell Endurance. As far as I know, Pavel is the one presenting, so we're pretty excited about wow. that. Um, yeah. So that would be a cool time for anyone who's listening to maybe come and check CPG out in person. Uh, if you're ever in Chicago and you want to swing kettlebells, come up to Lakeview where we're at. Um, you can find us on our website at chicagoprimal.com. We're always excited to meet new people and show them the community. So uh, that's the way you find me. I'd love to meet you. Sounds awesome. Thanks so much, Sean, and uh, I'll be talking to you later. Cool. Thank you, Shane.